airfoil, that's fine. This one, I, I, was, I made no attempt for a flat bottom. I wanted a more or less symmetrical. And that's pretty much what I got. The disadvantage What did you one, do differently to get a symmetrical airfoil? I didn't, I just made no attempt to fold it flat. Once I made the crease, I just, I held it up and just did that. By eyeball. Yeah. And it just folded fairly symmetrically. Nothing wrong with eyeball. That's true. <laughs> well, Rocky, wouldn't, I mean, if the trailing edge, or the trailing edges are going to meet, correct? More or less. So, like, if the top piece were poured a little more meat to it than the bottom, then it would. Or you trim it after you get it. Well, that's what. That, that's an alternative. You can trim it afterwards. Uh, you can leave it long. What do you uh, cut it with? Cut it with a uh, box cutter, a utility knife. It cuts very easily with those kinds of things. Um, on this one, yeah, on this one, you can see that the bottom surface is, is continuous with the olivons. So, so the top surface folds over to here. This one started out, obviously, with... Uh, Like that, and then the the fold lines are here. So then you fold these over. That's not right. It's more like that. So then you fold these over to the center line to make this. So picture picture this half of the wing just unfolded, and then uh, for the elevons on this one, you you have a well you. You can just cut them with a the utility knife again, or you can make this handy dandy little tool which cuts them very, very nicely. What it consists of are, are those hooked, hook shaped uh, utility knife blades, and they're just screwed to a piece of uh, uh, yardstick, and with a screw in, one screw in this way, one screw in this way. Well, the spacing there um, works out perfectly for one flute. So you just hook them inside the flute and do that, and there's your elevon. And and that's that's exactly how that airplane's made. And it works fine. Pass that tool around. It works very well. Pardon? Pass that's that it. tool okay. around. Is that the same <laughs> it is sharp. Uh, is that I, I don't that know looks what pretty neat. I don't know what these blades are actually for. Yeah, they're for shingles. Oh, they're just for cutting shingles, but he's got two of them, you know. So that's a method of making uh, making control It looks surfaces. like it would be pretty hard to cut with this part back here. Well, that's so when those get dull, you can switch it around, see? <laughs> all right, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> for spars, people use all kinds of different things for spars. Uh, <clears throat> this this uh, flying wing, this plank, has uh, carbon arrow shafts. Now, these came from the, the junk bin at... Uh, the archery shop on Carlisle, and there's two different sizes. They just happen to to fit together almost perfectly, one inside the other, and that's the spar that's in this one. It consists of three shafts, two inside the other. Then they meet in the center and they're glued together. So that's the spar in this in this airplane. Um, that's pretty clever. What I should have done is is taken a piece of tubing like this and made something to reinforce that center joint because that's a, thinking about it now, it's a weak spot where there's two, those two come together in the center. And I should have reinforced it. But you can use anything, you know, you can use golf club shafts that you get from Goodwill. That's way um, too simple. Dan, in his, what he likes to do is make a, make a spar out of coroplast. So here's the top surface of his wing, and then here's the bottom surface. So he's actually got a spar that looks like this. He's got, and the flutes are running this way. And lengthwise, then between, lengthwise, spanwise? Spanwise, right, with the flutes running spanwise. And then inside there, he's got three strips that taper of, uh, of coroplast that he cut. And when he drew me the picture, he said the flutes are going also spanwise, but I think he I think he made a mistake. I think 
I think those flutes probably run vertically, just like you would a shear web in a in a balsa right. plane. The balsa He's grain. made an I beam. Exactly. The balsa grain goes vertical. So I'm sure he meant that, that that's how that goes. And and that's what uh, that's what the spar is in this airplane. I wonder why he bothered with the extra horizontal pieces. Just because, who knows? <laughs> there's there's two two sizes of coroplast. There's two millimeter and four millimeter that, that are commonly used for airplanes. There are other sizes too. Uh, the two, two millimeter is, is relatively flexible, and that's what this plane is made of. And it's it's kind of squishy. It's more it's lighter weight certainly. Um, this is four millimeter, um, and it's it's tougher stuff. You can see this wingtip's kind of crunched. I I drove that one in pretty hard, but it certainly didn't destroy it. Um, and you pick it up and throw it off the hill again. Okay. Terry was kind enough to bring a plane that we've been working on. Um, this is a model of a, an Indian condor. Um, and it's something that he's going to take down to South America and actually slope soar with real condors. And it's made primarily of coroplast too. What we used on this one, this is the center, this is the center of the wing here. And then one wing tip has been added. Picture one of these also on this side. I, I left the, the those just those strips of tape, you can open it up. I, I made it I, I wanted to okay. be left so you could open it up and, and look cool. at the inside. What we used for spars on this one uh, are the golf club shafts that I was talking about. And they actually did come from Goodwill. Looks like you got some phone in the end, too. <clears throat> so here's the inside of this wing so far. So this is a golf club, golf club shaft. The center joiner that Terry came up with is basically a plywood box that's completely filled with epoxy. Uh, so these, there's two golf club shafts, one here that butts up here in the center, and then another one from here that butts in the center, and they're joined in that box. Uh, to secure the spars to the coroplast in this case, they're taped with, uh, with uh, Okay. with packaging tape that has uh, fibers going both ways. Uh, and then also they're sewn using uh, spider wire, uh, what's it called? Spider wire. Yeah, it's, it's Kevlar, Kevlar fishing line. Yeah, spider wire um, fishing line is what it is. Is it Kevlar? And it's a Kevlar no, type it's fishing not, line. It's not Kevlar. So it's, it's very strong. One thing that Terry did to make this, this sewing part easier, uh, take a Dremel tool and, and a small bit and just pre-drill the holes. And then you can sew it fairly quickly without having to, without having to shove it through. You sew it before or after the tape? After the tape. So it's sewn, the tape's first and then the, the stitches are on top, which helps keep the tape. How are you going to ship this thing down there? Well, if I could just point out a couple of things. So this, there's, a, there's, this is the inboard section of the wing, okay? And if you think about this, visualize what's going on. This is going, we're going to make, we're going to make the body out of coral, out of EVP foam. The, the body will sit, the body will sit here, it will attach to the tail, which is back here. And there's another, 